Welcome to this short video on showing you how to ensure that the data you report to the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection's Drinking Water Electronic Lab Reporting Application, or Dweller for short, is accurate. Public water systems must submit all drinking water compliance and monitoring data to DEP through Dweller. This video will walk users through the features of Dweller to assist you in reviewing your data for errors, duplications, and to ensure accurate reporting of data. This video will go through these five features in Dweller that you should utilize to verify that your data is accurate. The first Dweller feature we will talk about is the confirmation screen. We will start on the Dweller main page and scroll down to the bottom and click on the Add New Records button. For our example, we will use the SDWA1 form and we will be entering data directly into Dweller. These features apply to data that is uploaded as well. You will begin entering your data. After you have entered your first line of data, you can use the Copy Previous button which will help ensure data accuracy. Here we have entered our five new records. Now we will scroll down to the bottom of the page and click the Submit button. Remember, be patient and only click the Submit button once. Clicking multiple times will cause duplication of data submitted. After your data has finished compiling and is submitted to Dweller, the Submission Confirmation screen appears. The first thing to notice is the second line, which identifies that your submission included five records and that, displayed in red text, there is one record with an error or warning. A table is provided which will further help break down the submittal for you to ensure the accuracy of the data entered into Dweller. The first column identifies the SDWA form. The second and third columns are related to the submission you just made. You can see that for our example, five records were entered for the SDWA1 form, and that there is one record with an error or warning. The fourth column identifies any error or warning with data reported using your laboratory ID for the current reporting period. The next Dweller feature we will talk about is how you can view your error report to see what the issue is with the data you submitted into Dweller, and then how to correct the error. From the submission confirmation screen, we see that we have one record with an error or warning for the data we just submitted. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and click the Error Report button. The Error Report will show all of your errors or warnings for the current reporting period. So you can see that there are six records for this current reporting period. Each line of data or record submitted will have its own error message or messages. For this example, we will edit the one record that was just entered that has an error. We need to find our recently entered record with the error or warning. Here we can see that the error report is telling us that this record's sample and analysis dates are mismatched. After you have identified which record you want to correct, select it by clicking the checkbox to the left of the PWS ID. After you have selected the record or records you wish to edit, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click the Edit Selected Records button. A warning box will appear telling you that you are about to edit the selected records. If you want to continue to edit the selected records, click the OK button. If not, click the Cancel button. You are then taken to the page where you can edit the record or records. This page will display what the error or warning is. As we can see, for our example, the error is that the sample date does not match the analysis date. Looking back at our laboratory results, we see that the sample date was entered incorrect. We will enter the correct sample date of November 30th, 2022. After we have entered the correct information for the record, click on the Submit button. We are returned to the Submission Confirmation screen. Here we can see if revising the record eliminated the error or warning. We can see that the second line tells us we submitted one record and that there were no errors or warnings. However, don't forget that Dweller is telling us that there are previous records submitted during the current reporting period associated with your laboratory ID which still have errors or warnings. Remember, warnings are just that, that the system is warning you that there could be an issue with the data you submitted. 
for example, an MCL exceedance. If you receive a warning, you should double check your data. A warning could be data that may not require correction. The next Dweller feature we will talk about is how you can view and edit any of your records. Another way to verify that you have entered accurate data into Dweller is through the View and Edit Records page. You can access this page from the Submission Confirmation screen by clicking the View and Edit Records button. This is the View and Edit Records screen. It shows all records that have been entered into Dweller for the current reporting period by a user associated with your laboratory ID. It is highly recommended to print a copy of your submission so that you can review your data for accuracy. To do this, click the word here at the top of the View and Edit Records page to create the printer-friendly version. Remember to check your results as an error message may not generate for this field. For example, if you misplace a decimal point or mistakenly add an extra digit. You can sort the records by any column which has a sort button, which are the PWS ID, entry point, sample date, and laboratory ID. For our example, we want to make sure that we have entered all of our records and not duplicated any records, so we will sort by the sample date. Now we can see that all of the records have been sorted by sample date, with the earliest at the top of the table. If you would like to edit any of the records or even delete a record, click on which record you want by using the checkbox to the left of the PWS ID. Then either click the Edit Selected Record or Records button and you can edit the record or records as we just saw earlier in this video. Or you can delete the selected records. For our example, let's assume that there are two records we want to delete. A warning box will appear telling you that you are about to delete the selected records. If you want to continue to delete the selected records, click the OK button. If not, click the Cancel button. After your deletion has been processed, you will be taken to the Deletion Confirmation screen, where you can see how many records were just deleted and how many records remain in the system for the current reporting period. Sometimes, duplicate records are entered into Dweller by mistake. This could happen if you accidentally upload twice or if another user with your lab ID enters the records but forgets to tell you and you enter those records a second time. If a record with an MCL exceedance is duplicated, then the violations would be duplicated as well. This is why it's highly recommended to always view all record entries. We will walk through how you can spot and eliminate any duplication. We will begin the example by entering our records through the upload file process as opposed to entering the data line by line. You will then get the submission confirmation screen. Remember, because you are a responsible Dweller user, after you submit data, you are going to use the features in Dweller to review the data you submitted for accuracy, check your error report, and ensure no duplication of records. You can do this by clicking the View and Edit Records link. When you view the records, you notice that the data you just uploaded appears twice. You ask your coworker who uses the same laboratory ID as you if they uploaded the records. They respond that they uploaded them yesterday before they left work for the day and didn't get a chance to leave you a note about it. So now you know how the records were duplicated. Because you uploaded these records, you can delete the entire upload as opposed to selecting the individual records to delete. Do this by scrolling down to the bottom of the View and Edit Records page and click the More Delete Options button. You then can see the records that have been uploaded. You would simply select the uploaded records that you want to delete. And then click the Deleted Selected Records Set button. You will get the warning box asking if you are sure you want to delete the selected records. Now we can view our records again to make sure the deletion happened and we can see that we no longer have duplicative records. When we try to exit Dweller, we get a pop-up warning message. You are verifying that you have checked your error report and corrected those errors, that you have followed the recommended procedure of saving or printing your submission and ensured that you do not have any duplicate records. If this is the case, you can click the OK button to exit Dweller. The second to last Dweller feature we will talk about is how you can check your counts to verify that you have entered all of your records and not duplicated any. 
After you first log into Dweller, but before you add new records, scroll down and click the View and Edit Records button. On the View and Edit Records screen at the bottom, we can see that for the current reporting period, there are currently six records entered for SDWA1 and zero records entered for SDWA4, 4U, 5, and S, and zero records for crypto. Now we can scroll down and click on Add New Records. Select the form for which you want to enter the records. For this example, we will select SDWA1 as it is the most commonly utilized form. You can then begin entering your new records. Complete your record entry. For this example, we did not show all of the records being entered, but a total of five were entered. Remember to scroll down and click the Submit button. After you have submitted your data, you will get the Submission Confirmation screen. Click the View and Edit Records button. On the View and Edit Records screen, you can see that there are now 11 records entered for SDWA1 and zero records for the other form types. We started with six records for SDWA1 and entered five under the same form so we know we entered the correct number because there are 11 records. When you are entering records via the upload file link, you need to ensure that you have entered the correct number of records. Let's take a look at how to do that. Before you upload your records, first go to View and Edit Records. Here you can see that currently there are two records in Dweller for SDWA1. We are going to upload 31 records using the Upload File link. After we have selected our file, we will click the Submit button. Remember to only click the Submit button once, as being impatient and clicking it multiple times will upload duplicative records. You can see that the confirmation screen identifies 31 records were entered. Remember, because you're a responsible Dweller user, you will want to click on the View and Edit Records button. Here you can see we now have 64 records entered for SDWA1. However, we only started with 2 records and uploaded 31 records, so we should expect 33 records. We realized that we were impatient and clicked the Submit button twice. So we have 31 duplicative records in Dweller. The final Dweller feature we will talk about are the emailed alerts that Dweller will automatically send to you. Dweller will send emails on the first, 5th and 9th of the month to every user associated with your laboratory ID if any data submitted into Dweller that reporting period has errors or warnings associated with it. The table in the email has seven columns which will help you identify where the error has occurred. The column includes the form type, the entered laboratory ID, as a person may be entering data for more than one PWS ID, the PWS ID, the contaminant ID, the record ID, the date the data was submitted into Dweller, and the error message. For this example on screen, we can see that the distribution point ID was missing or is invalid and that the PWS ID is inactive. If you receive an email from Dweller identifying errors, you should always go into Dweller and check the error report and fix any errors before midnight on the 10th of the month. There are three helpful features in Dweller's View Access to ensure that your accredited laboratory has submitted accurately on your behalf. Those features are the View Records, the Error Report, and Record Counts. We will now go through an example of how a public water system can use Dweller's View Access to ensure that their accredited laboratory has entered accurate data into Dweller on their behalf. Begin by logging into Dweller. To enter Dweller's View Access, click on your PWS ID number. In View Access, most of the features we went over still apply. However, since you are in the View Access, you will not get a submission confirmation screen as you are not submitting data, nor will you receive the Dweller error reminder email as you are not the one submitting the data. After you have logged into Dweller, you can scroll down and click the View Records button. In View Access, you can view data submitted for your PWS ID by any laboratory. 
it is important to check your data and view access as a lab could have misentered the PWS ID number and inadvertently entered data for your PWS ID instead of the intended PWS ID. In this case, you should call Dweller Assistance at 717-722-4018. In this example, you know from talking with your accredited laboratory that there was a total coliform positive sample on August 1, 2023 at location 702 and that the three required check samples were taken. You can see the total coliform positive sample but only one of the check samples. You should then reach out to your accredited laboratory and let them know that two of the check samples have not been entered. Similarly, you can view the error report and identify records submitted by your laboratory with errors and contact the laboratory to correct these before the 10th of the month. Also, in view access, you can check your counts. If you entered 31 daily chlorine residuals and the lab was supposed to enter total coliform results, but you see that the count for SDWA1 is still 31 and it's the 10th of the month, that is a clear indication that the total coliform records have not been submitted double check and view and call your accredited laboratory to ensure that these will be entered right away. Thank you for watching our video on ensuring the data you submitted to Dweller is accurate. You can now proceed to the next video in the Dweller series. Be sure to check DEP's website or YouTube channel for new videos.